Welcome to ILTV's Israel Daily. I'm Tracy Alexander and coming up in today's newscast. It's a spectacle never before seen as Israel's first sitting Prime Minister to sit trial faces court today. Worshippers disappointed arriving at Jerusalem's holiest church to find its doors still closed. And biblical protein, why an Israeli company is bringing back the eating of locusts. A blockbuster case kicking off in Jerusalem as Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu becomes the first sitting Prime Minister to face prosecution. Pictures never before seen as the Israeli leader arrived at the courthouse. Earlier today, rival protests with Israelis out in force both in support and against Netanyahu's ability to serve. Netanyahu loyalists and members of his Likud party jumping to the Prime Minister's defence over the weekend, calling the trial a politically motivated witch hunt. Newly appointed Internal Security Minister Amir Ohana claiming the case is the greatest injustice in Israel's history. Opposition leader Yair Lapid for his part took to social media claiming the Qud ministers are broadcasting incitements against law authorities. On Twitter, Lapid claiming the Qud ministers have one goal to threaten the judges. It's the only coup attempt that's going on here, he says. Now, Netanyahu is being charged in three cases. First is case 1000. Netanyahu is charged with fraud and breach of trust because he and his wife Sarah allegedly received over $200,000 worth of gifts. This in return for help in private business dealings. Next is case 2000. Again, Netanyahu is charged with fraud and breach of trust for allegedly negotiating a deal with Arnon Moses, the owner of Israel Daily idiot Ahronot. In this deal, Netanyahu would allegedly receive better coverage in exchange for passing legislation that would damage the growth of rival newspaper Israel Hayom. The legislation did not pass, though. And finally, case 4000, a.k.a. the Bezek Affair. This is arguably the most serious case in which Netanyahu is alleged to have passed regulatory favours for Israeli telecommunications giant Bezek, favours totalling about half a billion dollars. In return, Netanyahu would again receive positive news coverage, but this time from Walla News, which Bezek controls. And joining us is Israeli criminal defence lawyer Sharon Nahari. Sharon, a pleasure to have you with us. Give us a bit of insight. Talk us Thank through you. what we can expect in today's hearing. Actually, today is the first hearing. Uh, the defendant usually in this kind of proceeding is coming to court and he's uh, uh, plea guilty or not guilty. So uh, as we heard, uh, Mr. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu plea not guilty and this trial is about to start. But uh, some uh, procedural, uh, legal procedural uh, can be made before, such as uh, asking evidence, which the prosecution not always give to the defendant. Also, um, to discover uh, evidence that uh, uh, under seal, it's like, it's like motion to court to, uh, to dispose it. And we're going to see what is the court going to say about the, the dates. Mm -hmm. when it's going to be. All right. And, of course, this is one of, of many hearings that we can expect. How long could this trial continue for? A uh, long time. He just, uh, Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu just finished to fight the battle in the political uh, uh, ground. Now he's going to fight the legal uh, arguments in the court. It can take more than two or three years. And of course, we know court cases, court cases can be very grueling. Talk us through how significant yes. of a burden this will be on the Prime Minister. The burden of proof usually is on the prosecution, not, not on the defendant. It will be hard for uh, Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu, but we don't 
we need to, to remember that in criminal case, the elements of the offense uh, built uh, under two things, the mens rea and the actus rea. I mean, the, the factual basis and the mental basis. The prosecution need to prove, to give evidence beyond reasonable doubt that uh, he actually made all these kind of offenders, the, the, the fraud, the breach of trust, and also the bribery. Mm -hmm. and, so uh, it's depend about the interpretation of the court for the witnesses and uh, or the elements of offense itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Sharon, thank you so much for that insight. Thank you. Now, of course, it might be a spectacle, and we have seen protesters taking to the streets in Jerusalem. But as they say about Israel, 8 million people, 8 billion opinions. Well, it's really close to 9 billion. So how are people feeling here in Tel Aviv? Well, our correspondent, Marav Sevier, went to find out, and she joins me here in studio. Marav, great to have you with us. Thank you for having me. And talk me through what people told you today. So you're talking about 8 billion or 9 billion opinions, and we were expecting to find some really strong opinions on the street of Tel Aviv. That's not really what we found today. We found a lot more subdued, a lot of talk about democracy and this being a good day. Not really anybody coming out saying this is a witch hunt or never be be. We didn't hear any of those things from the people we spoke to. This is what they told us. We haven't really been following it so closely because we're New Orleans. So it's kind of on the not even on the list of things that I'm worrying about at the moment. There's a lot of things. I feel that it's a good process for our democracy. And it's, uh, I think that's uh, having our prime minister, such a strong person around the world, standing into trial and, uh, uh, and trying to, to get, uh, to get uh, himself uh, in a sort of verdict, I think it's a, it's a good sign for our democracy. I feel that the truth needs to be done, and it will be done. On his death, I don't know what to say to you. I really don't know. אני באמת, אני לא יודעת, אני מקווה שזה הכל יהיה בסדר בשבילו, כי הוא עבד כל, כל כך הרבה שנים, ואנחנו היינו כל כך מרוצים מהשנים שלו, אז למה שאולי זה איזה טעות? לא, לא יודעת מה להגיד לך. אני מסתכל על זה, אתה יודע, הוא באמת עשה כמה דברים טובים, קורפשן, אבל אין מישהו מעל החוקה. אני I have nothing against him personally, but um, I think yeah, everybody should, should be equal in the eyes of the law and uh, uh, if he's done what, what they say he did, so he should be tried. So I want to focus on one of the shorter reactions that we had uh, during this combination, the woman in the red shirt who was talking about justice. She spoke to us for about three minutes about Netanyahu, and it started with this is justice should be served and it will be served, and it ended with her speaking about everything that Netanyahu did for the country right. this entire time that he was mm -hmm. prime minister and about how she feels that even after this, he's going to come back and he's going to be president of the state of Israel. And that's something that we've heard from a lot of people, that sentiment of we can't forget what he has done for Israel when it comes to security, mm -hmm. when it comes for certain things, even if this is what's going on at the moment. And we also know that this, is, this comes a week after Netanyahu who has formed his new government. Sworn in. And so right. we did ask people also if they believe that he should have been allowed to build his, uh, this coalition government. This is what they told us. Uh, no, and I, I didn't vote for him. So, uh, but I, I, I don't represent the, the majority, as it turns out. Uh, and if most of the people, or not most, but if, if at least half of the people think he should be prime minister, even though he faces such severe accusations, um, who am I to say something else? If somebody's on trial, they're on trial. That's not a conviction, that's a, that's a charge. Well, I think that uh, someone is innocent until uh, the trial is over, so I think that, uh, that it's, it's fair enough, yeah? I agree with the, with the Supreme Court. And you have it at... Netanyahu. Netanyahu. I want to say that he will be able to do it. אני לא יודעת, לא מבינה מה הוא עשה ולא עשה ולא עשה, אז בינתיים צריכים לתת לבן אדם לגמור את הזמן, וזהו. So some people with a lot to say, others really didn't even want to talk to you, right? There were a ton of people who we'd stop them on the street, we'd say, hey, we want to ask you a couple questions. And then as soon as they heard the name Netanyahu, all of a sudden they were rushing to work, their right. dog had to go home, they just tried to escape our microphone as quickly as well, possible. Well, as we've seen from the protests, <laughs> a very divisive issue, but thank you so much Probably for that insight, Mirav. Thank you.
Well, now, Israel has seen no new coronavirus-related deaths for almost five days, but health officials are now warning of a second wave of the outbreak. The death toll sits at 279 after Israel's youngest male victim succumbed to the virus on May 20. 33-year-old Avishalom Rosilio leaving behind a wife and baby. The most recent Israeli casualty. Now, Israel has been at the forefront of global research looking into a vaccination and cure for COVID-19 and ways of keeping the public safe before such a time. Now, the urgency for a country like Israel to protect army units from the pandemic has seen the large number of coronavirus blood tests intensifying, expanding from civilian clinics now to the military. And joining me in the studio are the men leading the charge, Professor Mordechai Gerlich and Professor Ariel Munitz. And they're from Tel Aviv University's Centre for Combating Pandemics. Gentlemen, great to have you with me. Great to be here. Thank you. So talk us through, first of all, the study and how it works. You want to start, Marty? OK, I will start. So the study, we basically built a, a new serological test. And what we wanted to ask is how the military or how the soldiers are infected by coronavirus and from that, we can learn about the civilian as well. So we can understand when you have a unit, when there was a spread of coronavirus, mm -hmm. and the military decide to uh, quarantine the soldiers, we can understand if it was spread, if it was a good quarantine, and we can decide later how we can go to other units in the army, or if you take it to civilian life, is the quarantine is really working. Right, and, wh and why were soldiers a particularly useful model, I suppose, to, well, to test on? Yeah, the soldiers are extremely useful because it's it's very heterogeneous population. There are bases which actually stay and are intact in the base. So you can learn about the policies of isolation within a closed base. Mm -hmm. If there would be a second wave, did these policies hold ground truth? Uh, the second thing is this: th there are bases where uh, soldiers would go outside and interact with civilians. So what did this interaction bring inside the army? So we right. can learn a lot by studying the army. Certainly, and now we're seeing all of this talk about a potential second wave, if it's already started, if it's still coming. What has this study revealed so far about coronavirus? So, so far with the hundreds that we, we already tested, it seems that the, the, the quarantine really worked nice in Israel. So there, there isn't a big spread and most of the tested are, are basically negative. They, they never saw the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. What it will tell us about the second wave, it's early to say. Okay. We, will, we, we continue to monitor and we will be able to see if there is a second wave and, and if it's spreading again. Right. But when it comes to perhaps finding a vaccine, I suppose, what does this study, where, where does this study take us? So in terms of vaccine, I mean, this could be a, not, not this specific study, but the assay which we developed, which is quite robust and, and very simple to use, it will tell us if a vaccine uh, generated antibodies in the person who was vaccinated, we'll be able to test it mm -hmm. using our serological test. It's not specific for the army. Mm -hmm. And how rather... far along are we with that? Of course, you're using Israeli subjects, but if you do in fact find an effect vaccine, this will go global, this will go worldwide. So, so one thing that's important to stress, we're not looking for a vaccine, but if someone would be looking for a vaccine, he would have to use a serological test in order to validate that this, anti this uh, uh, vaccine generated an antibody response. And this is where we could come in helpful. Right. And we also know that the Israeli Medical Corps is helping with the study. How are they contributing? Yes. So they're basically, they're running the test. We have the test in our lab where we actually test the antibodies, but they are in charge of collecting the blood. They are in charge of which unit they actually want to sample from the army point of view, what, what is more important for them. So it's basically a, a working together. It's a work. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's working together with the well, medical. It's important corps. to remember that you know the army has also essential units, and they tell us which essential units that say what they want to clear and what is exactly. So they they prioritize which soldiers they want us to to go into. Well, I suppose unfortunate uh, that Israel has to have an army that is so active. That but yes. uh, but I suppose on the fortunate side of things, they are proving to be an effective model for testing. So right. that I suppose that if we are moving forward with this research, the rest of the world can benefit. Hopefully, yes. professors. Thank you so much for that insight and for the work thank that you. you're doing. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Well, as coronavirus restrictions ease in the Holy Land, holy sites are beginning to reopen. But today, worshippers were left disappointed after a last-minute decision to keep the doors of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre closed a little longer. And this is not what they were told. So I went along to see how it unfolded. Take a look. <laughs> Exclusive entry only to a select few. This masked monk, one of the lucky ones allowed in. 
as a priestly procession is ushered out of the holy doors. The rest left outside to take a quick selfie or two. The doors, though, sealed shut to the public. Well, it's not what was expected. Worshippers that turned up here expecting to go inside today have been told the doors aren't going to be open until next week. And that's hopefully next week. Worshippers have been pressing their hands up against the wooden structures, trying to get as close as possible to the holy site. Now, this has become a common image outside the church during the coronavirus pandemic. Once the lockdown was over and believers could once again visit the old city's holy structures. Now, it's a place that really needs no explanation. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre is where Christians believe Jesus was crucified, buried and resurrected. The doors opening every half an hour to monks and priests from the Assyrian, Coptic, Catholic, Greek Orthodox and Armenian faiths as members of the public huddled around the entrance hoping to get a peek inside. Strict hygiene measures are still in place, people wearing their masks even outside to protect themselves and others from contracting the coronavirus. And when these doors do open next week, that will in fact continue. Only 50 people will be allowed to enter at a time. We're expecting very long lines and they'll need to socially distance, continue to wear their masks and there'll be no kissing of stones and religious structures. Now, while the site is beloved by those of the Christian faiths, with such a significant history, it attracts people from all backgrounds. Local tour groups are once again coming just to learn about the Christian quarter, singing songs of peace today. Those the hopes of everyone who will no doubt be crowding this amphitheatre come Sunday. Now in other news, while select nations are preparing to reopen their borders for Israeli tourists, well one South American country is orchestrating a visit with a very different purpose. And the fates of thousands, if not millions, of cows are resting on the outcome. Aaron Porras has the story. Amidst one of the toughest travel bans on earth due to the coronavirus, a group of Israeli rabbis are taken to the skies on their way to Argentina. But not for some vacation. Argentinian beef exports have been slowed to a crawl, especially with the EU and China. But Israel, Argentina's third largest client, is still open for imports, provided the beef is properly blessed and kosher. So putting together a special flight, the rabbinical travelers leaving Israel for a tour of Argentina's meatpacking plants. Siempre vienen los rabinos a fiscalizar, pero vienen por las líneas aéreas comerciales normales. Al estar paralizado todo este sistema de vuelos a nivel internacional, la única alternativa es este, poder tratar de implementar este charter en combinación con los clientes de Israel, supervisado, autorizado y coordinado por los gobiernos de Argentina e Israel en esta oportunidad. Now under normal circumstances, the Israeli rabbinate requires an Israeli team to certify kosher imports anyway, and a team typically comes to inspect at least twice a year. But this trip is especially important amidst a current lack of certified rabbis for local and other kosher markets too. So what comes to mind when you think of biblical protein? I'll let all the visuals stir in your head for a few seconds. Biblical protein. Well, it's an interesting product and it's now on the market, which is serving locusts as a snack. Now, while eating the locust-like insect might sound a bit extreme or even quite futuristic, these leggy creatures were consumed in ancient times, serving as a high source of protein. Even John the Baptist is said to have eaten it near the banks of the Jordan River. So, how did it come to be that it's back on the market? Well, to give us that insight, I'm joined in the studio by Draw Tamir, the co-founder and CEO of Hargol Food Tech. Great to have you with us. My pleasure. I say great to have you, but I'm looking at these products pretty warily. Talk me through what we're looking at here and why we're bringing locusts back. Well, first, uh, you probably are aware to the fact that global demand for protein is expected to double over the coming decades. And you're probably also aware to the fact that existing protein sources are reaching the limitations. Right, I am aware. So we do need to develop alternative high quality proteins uh, that uh, will be healthier for us and more sustainable for okay, the environment. Okay, so how nutrient-rich are these when you say high-quality protein? 
these are amazing. Proudly Nature's uh, best quality protein you can find. Really? They contain 70% protein with no processing, the animal as it is. They okay. contain all essential amino acids. They are high on omega-3 and omega-6, iron, zinc, and folic acid. Mm -hmm. And I can see you've put them into bars, which makes sense, I suppose, because you can add some other flavors. I can see here, I've got one here that you gave me before, Israeli locust honey and raisins. Okay, but then you also have these locusts here as they are. How are they made? Do you dry them out? Well, the whole uh, locusts are just oven dried ready to okay. eat. But the thing is, in the developed world, in, in the US, in Europe, we're not really used to eating insects right. in general and, and locusts in particular. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing, we are milling those whole grasshoppers, whole locusts into powder and we add them to a wow. wide range of food products with honey and biblical ingredients and we call it biblical protein. Well, it's fantastic that, of course, it's, it's um, bringing down the amount that we're relying on, on livestock, like, of course, our cows and our, and our lambs, etc. But I'm almost nervous to ask, how, how do they taste? Well, I can't tell you. You have to try. Are they vegan? Would you call Some, these vegan? Well, these are animals. <laughs> okay. however, however, let me tell you a fact. When you are eating a vegan or vegetarian <laughs> diet, you're all eating right. plants, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. In order to grow the plants, you have to, ki to kill all the insects that come to eat the plants. That's true. So you use pesticides to kill those. Mm -hmm. In a very nasty way, they contaminate the soil and the water. Okay, so you're saying they're better for the environment. This is even more humane. I'm, I'm really nervous. You're also telling me that these are kosher, I've seen. Yes, uh, in the Bible, on Leviticus, it says that Grasshoppers, locust, and hargol, that's the name of the company, are kosher, the okay. only kosher insect. Okay, can we eat them at the same time? I want to see. If I'm yeah, going to do not? it, you have to do it as well. Thank All you. right, here we you go. Do. That's a beautiful one. <laughs> it's a beautiful one, All right. I'm really scared. Lechaim, here we go. Lechaim. Oh, oh, it tastes like, it actually kind of tastes like nuts in a way. Exactly. Is that what? No, right. it's actually surprising. I thought it would taste way worse. Exactly, but Fantastic. now you should try the mm. energy bar. Oh, I'm going to try the energy bar. So tell me what you've put in these and how popular are they? Are people already eating these? We just launched those uh, in the US this weekend and the reactions are just overwhelming. Mm -hmm. They are popular. Overwhelming. People love them. Mm. See? It's so there you go with nuts. I see exactly what you're doing here. That's fantastic. And so if any of our viewers, of course, want to enjoy in this fantastic feast that we're getting stuck into, how can they do so? Very simple. Just log into biblicalprotein.com uh -huh. and order whatever product you like. Well, I feel very selfish eating this on my oh, own, so I've great. broken it in half so we can both try it. This one is with honey. What else do we have? What other flavors Every, do we have everyone here? Are, everything oh, is with honey. Apples? Because John the Baptist used to eat locusts with honey. Oh, that's that's fantastic. Bon appetit. There you go. Thank you. But have on. These are great. Mm, thank you very much. Well, as I keep crunching, Mm -hmm. mm, this is actually really good. I actually can't believe it. Well done. Can you and you're helping, you're saving the environment. Can you taste the grasshoppers inside? No, I cannot. There you go. Very healthy, very nutritious, and I've had my protein filled for the day. I'm very close to it, yeah. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> All right, Dora, thank you so much for being here and for bringing these fantastic treats for me to try. Very surprising. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, I will chew my way through the weather forecast. Let's take a look. The heat wave is officially over, but temperatures are still pleasant as the low tonight sits at about 59 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 degrees Celsius. Then tomorrow should be pretty warm again with highs of roughly 79 Fahrenheit or 26 degrees Celsius. And now, before we go, let's take a look at what is going viral in Israel. I'm telling you, during these coronavirus times, one of the best things I have seen have been the videos on the internet. A lot of these dog videos, and in fact, I've actually seen something similar where a husband is doing his wife's makeup. You have to check out that one. All right, that's it for today's news. And today's exchange rate is 3.51 shekels to the American dollar. And for more news from ILTV, please like ILTV on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube and Roku TV pages. I'm Tracy Alexander, and thanks so much for watching.